Hello, my name is Jeffrey Barnes. I'm from the University of Michigan. And for this program on practical management of venous thromboembolism, I'm gonna talk about some quick tips for preventing venous thromboembolism in orthopedic surgery patients. My disclosures include consulting fees from some of the companies that make anticoagulants or tools to manage anticoagulation therapy. Let's start with a clinical case. Imagine, if you will, a 65-year-old woman. She comes into your preoperative clinic prior to a left hip arthroplasty surgery that's scheduled in one week. Now, her past medical history is significant for a deep vein thrombosis that occurred 10 years ago when she was wearing an ankle and foot cast. She's also a former smoker who quit three years ago, and she has hypertension. Her current medications are aspirin 81 milligrams a day and lisinopril 5 milligrams a day. And a couple key questions come up here. First, what is her risk of post-operative venous thromboembolism? And second, what would be the best strategy for preventing venous thromboembolism? Well, when we think about the risk of venous thromboembolism in a surgical patient, such as a patient undergoing major orthopedic surgery, we have to think about both patient-specific and procedure-specific factors. Let's start with the procedure-specific factors. These include the extent and duration of surgery, the types of anesthesia that are gonna be used, and how immobilized a patient will be after surgery. We understand that these vary across different surgeries, but they have also been changing and evolving over time for the same type of surgery. Now, patient factors are also very important. These include things like older age, poor ambulation preoperatively, obesity, a history of venous thromboembolism, general cardiovascular disease, and any known thrombophilia. And any of these can also contribute to a patient's post-operative risk of developing a deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. In fact, if we look at patients who undergo major orthopedic surgery, those who do receive no prophylactic therapy whatsoever, that's the blue line shown here on the graph on the left, you can see that there is a quite high rate of venous thromboembolism. In fact, that rate approaches more than 4% just in the first month. However, the majority of that is concentrated in those first two weeks. You can see that that blue line really is steepest in those first two weeks and then starts to level off over the following two weeks before really becoming much more level beyond one month after surgery. Now that rate can be significantly reduced if you use some sort of anticoagulation prophylaxis, such as low molecular weight heparin. That's shown here in the green line. That is a much lower line that really bends the curve downwards, preventing VTE events. In fact, if we look at some early data, this is data from the 1980s where patients were randomized to receive low molecular weight heparin or placebo after an elective hip surgery, you can see the rates of venous thromboembolism. All rates, as well as those that were more proximal clots, were significantly reduced in the patients who received low molecular weight heparin. The same is true in data from about 10 years later in the mid-1990s, looking at a larger group of patients undergoing elective knee surgery. Again, the rates of venous thromboembolism quite high in those receiving placebo, significantly reduced in those who received low molecular weight heparin uh, prophylaxis. Now, more recently, we've compared low molecular weight heparin to the direct oral anticoagulants. These would be drugs like the direct thrombin inhibitor dabigatran and the factor 10A inhibitors of pixaban, rivaroxaban, and adoxaban. And you can see here in this meta-analysis of 12 different studies, these were focused just on the factor 10A inhibitors, that there's a significant benefit from preventing symptomatic DVT in patients who received the direct oral anticoagulant, about a 50% reduction. And in fact, if you look at the overall data from this meta-analysis, you can see similar mortality rates, lower rates of symptomatic DVT, but similar rates of non-fatal PE and similar, but a trend towards maybe some higher rate of major bleeding. In fact, that's one of the reasons that many orthopedic surgeons have been pushing towards less intensive antithrombotic therapy. In fact, they suggest that aspirin may be an appropriate drug to prevent venous thromboembolism while also reducing bleeding risk. You can see here in this meta-analysis, 
uh, published almost a decade ago now, that when we compare aspirin to any form of anticoagulation, largely low molecular weight heparin, we see that the relative risk for proximal DVT prevention was about the same, 1.15 confidence interval overlapping one. But when we look at the clinically relevant bleeding events, we do see that there's a significant reduction in the patients who received aspirin, almost a 50% reduction. So aspirin seems to offer similar benefit at preventing clot with lower risk of bleeding in the post-operative period. In fact, there has been a very large multi-center observational study done in the state of Michigan. This is called the Marquee Registry. They looked at patients with total hip arthroplasty. They had almost 60,000 of these patients. And you can see the rates of venous thromboembolism or death, the figure on the left, and major bleeding, figure on the right. And of course, those patients who received no uh, therapy had highest rates of VTE and death. They also had highest rates of bleeding, probably due to underlying conditions. But the anticoagulant, aspirin, or combination of the two were really helpful in preventing VTE, probably at similar levels. But aspirin had lower rates of major bleeding in this observational cohort. In fact, when we look at the data here, the adjusted odds ratio, you can see that comparing aspirin to an anticoagulant showed very similar rates of VTE death with an approximately 40% reduction in the odds of major bleeding. Now, importantly, when you compare aspirin and DOAC, you do see that aspirin may not be as effective at preventing venous thromboembolism. That adjusted odds ratio is greater than one. So we're stuck in the situation where aspirin can cause less bleeding, but may not be quite as effective at preventing blood clots as the direct oral anticoagulants. What you've seen over time in this very large multicenter registry is really a dominance in the use of aspirin and a reduction in the use of anticoagulant therapy. So really trying to be selective about who receives anticoagulation. So what do the guidelines tell us? Well, the American Association of Orthopedic Surgery back in 2011, so a decade ago, recommended pharmacologic or mechanical prophylaxis for standard risk patients, but they said give both if the patient has prior venous thromboembolism. Now, the American Society of Hematology, they have probably the most recent medical guidelines in the space, and they really offered either aspirin or an anticoagulant for patients undergoing total hip arthroplasty or total knee arthroplasty. And that was a conditional recommendation with some low certainty of evidence. But they said, if you're gonna use an anticoagulant, a DOAC is probably the preferred agent to use. So how would I think about doing this? Well, aspirin is gonna be the default for the majority of my patients, maybe about 80 to 85% of patients undergoing hip or knee arthroplasty. Those who have low baseline VTE risk and minimal bleeding risk. But we might consider a short course of rivaroxaban. There was a study that looked at 10 milligrams of rivaroxaban for five days, followed by aspirin therapy thereafter in an intermediate risk group. These would be people who have multiple risk factors, but no prior venous thromboembolism, no severe thrombophilia. And then I'm probably going to use a direct oral anticoagulant for anywhere from two to four weeks for our highest risk patients, especially those with prior venous thromboembolism or severe thrombophilia. So if we come back to our case here, remember, this was our patient who was 65, came into clinic a week before surgery. She's previously had a DVT. So this is somebody who we would say is likely at high risk for venous thromboembolism, especially if she also happens to be obese. And what would be the best strategy? Well, I'm probably going to give her a direct oral anticoagulant in the post-operative period to try and prevent a blood clot. I hope this has been helpful and you've gotten some quick tips on preventing venous thromboembolism in patients undergoing orthopedic surgery. Thank you.